Hello everybody, welcome back to 2DS Studios, I'm 2DS, and I gotta say, out of all the Nickelodeon shows, I was not expecting Fairly Odd Parents to have such a crazy comeback this year. In case you don't know, Nickelodeon released a brand new Fairly Odd Parents sequel series called Fairly Odd Parents A New Wish. I watched it when it premiered, and I gotta say, I was pleasantly surprised. Mm, damn, that's good! It is an amazingly fresh take and the best thing that happened to this series in a very, very long time. Absolutely love the new protagonist Hazel, I love seeing the old characters come back, but I also love seeing some new characters too. It really is just a breath of fresh air after the past few years with this franchise because man has Fairly Odd Parents had it rough. And Fairly Odd Parents' rough track record during the 2010s is a big reason why a lot of people were probably skeptical of this new show. That and the show being animated in 3D. It's no secret that Fairly Odd Parents has had a very rocky transition to 3D. Oh, hey, Sonic. But why is that? Join me and find out as we go over the 3D evolution of Fairly Odd Parents. Premiering in 2001, the Fairly Odd Parents has become iconic for its 2D art style. Fairly Odd Parents was designed in a way that I feel like it was only meant to work in 2D, or at least only intended to be in 2D. Specifically with the character design, and of course the premise of the show. The way the characters are designed is that they are always shown at a three-fourths view, which means they're like kind of looking forward but also a bit to the side. That and their hands are always doing this weird kind of shape. It's a weird shape that their hands are always doing, but that's just part of the Butch Hartman style, I guess. This style works really well in 2D, giving every character a very strong silhouette, but in 3D it's gotten mixed results, to say the least. In certain episodes, and even some of the specials like Wishology, where they'll use 3D effects, specifically during Matrix references because of course, and the results are cool but also very funny looking. Cool that they were able to kind of reference the Matrix in that way, but also it is very clear that the 2D art style was not meant for 3D. It can definitely look a little rough around the edges, but it's kind of charming. But then there's merchandise of the Fairly Odd Parents, which looks <laughs> very funny. <laughs> Especially plushes and action figures, cause yikes. Why does Timmy look like that from the side? It makes me uncomfortable. Oh, oh, why is the face so flat? Cosmo, why are you so deflated? Who did this to you? I mean, at least Poof looks okay, but then again, he is just a ball with a face, so... It's like making a Kirby plush how you screw it up. The action figures look better, but also still a little rough. And how could we forget about license games like Nicktoons Unite or Break Into Rules? Yeah, they don't look too far off from the plushes. I'm noticing that the main problem with these models is that they make the face look either really flat or everything sticks out in a way that looks super unnatural, especially with the mouths. It took them a while to figure it out, but hey, they kind of figured it out thanks to the Jimmy Timmy Power Hours. I absolutely adore these specials. They are a cornerstone of my childhood. In fact, they're so iconic that I drew this poster. Pretty cool, isn't it? I was going for kind of like a Song Adventure 2 look with it, and I gotta say, looks pretty fire. Back to the Power Hours. Timmy, Cosmo, and Wanda, this is probably the best they've looked in 3D so far. Although granted, the bar was set pretty low, but they still look pretty all right. Admittedly, the visuals are kind of dated, but that's just because Jim Neutron was made in the early 2000s, so we can give him a pass on that. Even though Butch's designs don't translate too well to 3D, I think that's part of the charm with the Power Hours because the big novelty with them is seeing them outside of their normal art styles, seeing Jimmy in 2D and Timmy in 3D, and that's pretty cool. And when Nickelodeon made the Fairly Odd movie starring Drake Bell, they thought, all right, that worked then, so maybe it'll work now. It did not work. The thing about the Fairly Odd movies is that unlike the Power Hours, the CG is supposed to work in live action to make us think that Cosmo and Wanda are really there, but it just doesn't work for a good couple of reasons. One, the CG is very low budget with them being TV movies, and two, the Butch Hartman art style just doesn't work in 3D, and especially when they're trying to make it look like they're really there, they just stick out like a sore thumb. They probably would have been better off either doing it in the traditional 2D or changing the art style entirely so it would fit better in live action, or just having them be played by live action actors, just anything but this in live action. The four animated fairies in live action are Cosmo, Wanda, 
Poof and Foo. Cosmo and Wanda look basically the same as their Jimmy Timmy Power Hour designs. And Poof and Foop, this is their first time being seen in 3D. And they actually look good, but also their designs in 3D are literally just a cube and a sphere with faces. So it's not like their designs were super hard to translate. Honestly, every time I see Poof, I want to dunk him like a basketball. I know it might seem kind of hypocritical of me to critique these designs, but then praise the Power Hour designs despite them looking exactly the same. But in the Power Hours, you can look past them looking weird in 3D just because of the novelty of them crossing over. But that same novelty goes away completely in the live action films. And another thing about translating Fairly Odd Parents from 2D to 3D, and especially live action, is the fact that you are super limited to the stuff that you can wish for. Which is why I think that 2D was always the best way for them to go. Because with 2D, really the only limit is your imagination. Meanwhile, 3D, you have to model everything and the budget, and especially with live action too. These limits would not only hurt the live action Drake Bell movies, but it would also hurt the live action sitcom Fairly Otter, which was so bad that they permanently deleted it off Paramount Plus, and everyone probably forgot the show existed, which is for the best. But you know what? I've had enough negativity, and thankfully, we won't have any more because of the next show. Fairly Odd Parents A New Wish! And oh my god, this show looks so good! For TV CG, this looks absolutely amazing. And the big reason why is because they're kind of taking notes from the Peanuts movie by Blue Sky Studios. Is that they're trying to cheat 3D to look like 2D, and they did it absolutely phenomenally. Like, it has all the amazing detail of CG, but the way it's shot like 2D, it's absolutely adore Fairly Odd Parents A New Wish. It's a perfect combo of CG with that classic Fairly Odd Parent style. If you haven't seen it, please see it. It's on Netflix, it just dropped on there, and it is absolutely amazing. And the animation and art style just further proves how New Wish was really able to bring a new life to this franchise and is a worthy successor to the original. Yeah, right. I mean, look at what they did to Poof, or correction, Perry. Look at how fly they got my boy looking. Got the suspenders, the curl, they done gave him a pimp cane. You cannot tell me this dude ain't fly, and I ain't talking about the wings. This video isn't sponsored, but Nickelodeon, you know, maybe, just, just you know, hypotorically speaking, metaphorologically, First one's on the house. But yeah, despite Fairly Odd Parents' rocky transition to 3D, I'm glad to see that with a new wish they were able to figure it out in the end. And they made a show that looks truly spectacular. And that is it for today's video. If you had a fairy godparent, what would you wish for? My wish is for you to hit the like and subscribe button. Oh, oh yeah! yeah! Classic YouTuber segue. But if you did enjoy this video, I would highly recommend doing that. It really helps out. And so does commenting and sharing. And if you really liked the art I feature in this video, which was made by yours truly, by the way, why not check out my series behind the sketches where I go over the behind the scenes process of my art and making YouTube videos. I even have a Nickelodeon episode. Make sure to follow my socials to stay up to date. This has been 2DS Studios and until next time, stay tuned and stay cool. Thank you.